Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. In today's episode 3.4, Introduction to Agents, we're going to be taking a look at different agents that can be used to interact with ICP public interfaces from your canister. And we will also be taking a look at primarily the JavaScript agent and how we can use it in our canister to communicate with different interfaces. So what is an agent? An agent is a library that is used to make calls to ICP's public interface. You are going to be using an agent whether you are running a canister project locally or on the mainnet because you have two ways of interfacing with the canister when it's running. You can either use the canister's HTTP interface or you can use the API through an agent. So let's talk about some of the primary functions that an agent does. So we briefly touched on agents and how they structure data in the episode 2.2 advanced canister calls. And we're going to take a closer look at an agent submitting a post request to the canister's API at the URL forward slash API v2 canister, uh, the canister's ID slash call. And this post request is going to contain a request type, an authentication method, which is going to be comprised of the sender, a nonce value, and the ingress expiration value, which can be up to five minutes, the canister ID, the method name, the request ID, which is required for update calls. The request ID is a value that is the result of hashing the other fields in the request, and it's used for polling when ICP reaches consensus on the update call. The term polling refers to a technique that's used to check for fresh data over a given interval by making repeated API requests to a server. And lastly, it's going to contain an ARG, which is the rest of the call's payload. The agent assembles the ARG portion of the call using the data from the client application to ensure that the candidate interface matches the method that it calls. Each of these components are then assembled into a certificate, which is then transformed into a CBOR enco encoded buffer. The agent then takes that encoded certificate and attaches it to the body of the post request. When the canister begins to process the request asynchronously, the agent begins polling the read status requests until the canister returns a response. Another function of the agent is that it decodes data. So once data has been returned in a response from the mainnet, the agent takes the certificate from the calls payload and verifies it. The certificate is verified using the public root key of the ICP NNS subnet. The network is then going to return a CBOR enco encoded buffer for the agent to decode. And then it's going to transform it into a useful structure using semantic language specific types. For example, if the canister returns a type text and the agent is the JavaScript agent, the text will get turned into a JavaScript string. And lastly, agents are also used to manage authentication because each call to ICP requires that there is a cryptographic identity attached to the call. The agent is used to facilitate this identity being attached to the call. The identity can be anonymous or authenticated using a cryptographic signature, and canisters that use a call's attached identity use that to determine how to respond to the call, which enables smart contracts to use identities for other purposes. And also the ED25519 or ECDSA signatures on curve P256. This is also referred to as SECP256R1. When an agent encodes these identities as a principle, they attach a suffix byte, which indicates whether the identity is anonymous or self-authenticating. So there are several agents available for you to use in your project to perform these different tasks. Currently, there are two agents that are developed and maintained by Definity. These are the agent JS or JavaScript and TypeScript agent and the agent RS, which is the Rust agent. There are also several community supported agents, including a .NET agent, a Dart agent, a Go agent, a Java agent, a Python agent, a C agent, and a Ruby agent. 
So in this tutorial, we're going to be using an interactive example that uses the JavaScript agent. And we're going to take a look at how it can connect to ICP in a web browser. So before we start, make sure that you have your developer environment set up according to the instructions that we covered in tutorial 0.3, developer environment setup. And an important note for this tutorial is that certain versions of node.js may cause errors with agent .j or agent.js. It's recommended to use versions 12, 14, or 16 to avoid potential errors. So first we are going to create a new project. We're going to start by running dfx start clean background to get a local version of dfx running. We can see that my version or my instance is already running. And then in this example, we are going to use a pre-written example from the Definity examples repository. So we are going to git clone https github dot com slash definity slash example. And we can see that I already have this examples folder already cloned in this developer journey folder. So then I'm just going to navigate into it by going to examples. And then we are going to be using the Motoko random maze example in this tutorial. And then we're going to install the dependencies for this example using npm install. So for the first step in this interactive example, we are going to manually generate the candid declarations. This is because we are going to be using an example project that takes a variable size input and generates a random maze using that size. So for example, if we enter six, it's going to generate a six by six maze. Recall that Motoko projects have the ability to auto-generate the project's candid files. And so we are going to manually generate these using dfx generate. This dfx generate command is automatically run in the background when you use dfx deploy. And so we don't have to perform this step, but since we're going to take a closer look at the candid file itself, we're going to manually generate these files in this step. And it's going to create the source slash declarations slash random maze files. And we can see that it's creating several different .did or .did .d .ts or .did .js files. And these are the candid interface files for this project. And they've been automatically generated based on the Motoko code for this project. And so now if we want to take a look at the one for our random maze canister, that's going to be this random underscore maze .did file. So I'm just going to use cat to take a look at it. You can also open it in an IDE if you prefer. And so here we can see that it defines a service and this has generate nat to type text. And so recall that candid interface specifications define a service interface with a single method. The single method generate defined here accepts a single argument of type nat and returns an argument of type text. This is because we are going to enter the type nat in the UI that we're going to be creating in order to generate the maze. And that's ultimately going to generate a maze using emoji characters that are displayed in type text. We are going to be using the JavaScript agent. So just as a quick note, the type text in um, Motoko and Candid map to type string in JavaScript. And so now let's take a look at that dot did dot d dot ts file. And so in this file, the service export here is going to include the generate method with typings for an array of arguments and a return type. 
This export will be typed as actor method, which will be used as a handler that takes arguments and returns a response that resolves with the specified type in the candid declaration. And then lastly, we can take a look at the did.js file. And in this file, we have the export of IDL factory. This handles the structuring of the network calls according to the ICP API interface and the application's candid declaration. Unlike the declarations that we saw in the .did.ts file, the IDL factory must be available during the application's runtime. So to accomplish this, the ID, IDL factory gets loaded by an actor. So now we have the definitions in these three files, and we need to put them together in a file to create our agent. So we are going to open our IDE and start writing some code. So we're going to open, I'm going to find my developer journey directory. I'm going to find the examples folder and then Matoko. And this is the random maze example. And we'll open that. Then we're going to open source declarations random maze, and then this index.js file is going to be the file for our agent. And we can see that this agent's code is already written as a part of this pre-written example that we are using. And we can see that we are going to import, first we are going to import actor and HTTP agent from the Definity slash agent package. And then we are going to import that IDL factory from that .did.js file. And this code is in JavaScript. So our developer journey so far has focused on writing Matoko code. So we won't go into the details of this too deeply since it is a language that we haven't been introduced to writing the code yet in this developer journey. But if we just take a look at some of the key points, we can see that we are going to export something called canister ID, and this is going to process some environmental variables. We are going to define something to create an actor, and this is going to use that HTTP agent package that we imported. We're going to fetch the root key for certification validation during deployment. So this is going to use the DFX network environmental variable and then call agent.fetch root key. And then it is going to create an actor using the candid interface and the HTTP agent. So it's going to run create actor and then use that IDL factory variable that we imported. And then lastly, it's going to return random maze equals canister ID with the actor created for that canister ID. So in this code, the constructor first creates an HTTP agent, which wraps the JavaScript API, then uses it to encode calls through the public API. If the deployment is on the main net, the root key of the replica is fetched then an actor is created using the automatically generated candid interface for the canister, and it is passed the canister ID and the agent. One important note about this example and this fetch root key portion, this is not recommended for dApps that are deployed on the mainnet, since using fetch root key on the mainnet poses severe security concerns for the dApp that is making the call. It's recommended that you put this portion of the code behind a condition so that it only runs locally. So now that our actor is set up to call all of the defined service methods in this instance, which for this example is just the generate method, we can go ahead and deploy our project. So we'll use DFX deploy. And this is going to deploy all of the canisters in the project, which is going to be the random maze backend canister and then the random maze assets canister. 
So let's go ahead and open the front end canister URL in a new browser tab. And we can see this UI where we can type in the size of the maze and then we can generate a maze. And so remember that we're going to be typing in a number, which is type nat, and it is going to return type text. And it's going to be a maze that is made out of emojis that are using that type text. So if we click generate, it'll take a second. And then we can see our emoji maze has been created. And so what's happening here is when we type in our number, and we click on generate this agent that we created in the index.js file or that we saw was created in the index.js file is sending a request to the backend canister and it is asking for the maze function to be run with this input and it is asking for a type text to be returned. And so then the backend canister returns a response with the type text with these emoji characters for its random maze output. So that'll wrap things up for today's episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like and subscribe to the Definity YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the episodes of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below or check out the ICP Developer Forum or ICP Developer Discord server to chat with other developers who are also on their developer journey. That's it for me today. Take care, everyone.